Oh boy, I guess you guys have been listening well the past few weeks, because we're talking about one of the big bosses of Gen 3 overuse, who I've mentioned in almost every video in recent memory. That's right, it's Swampert. I'll spare you the Mudkip jokes, but Swampert really was such a cool Pokemon when it first came out. After the second generation only had monotype starters, we got Water Ground, one of the coolest type combos ever. Little were we to know that Fire Fighting, which we were all excited about back then, would soon become a joke. And then Sceptile got Dragon with its Mega Evolution. I guess. While Swampert's initial sprite was a little chunky, it's also a sick blend of a bulky but speedy aquatic beast. Check out how athletic the original concept art is. Man, I love that power clashing orange and blue. What a fashion sense. But did Swampert have power in the competitive space? Let's find out how good was Swampert actually. And in this video, we'll be covering these competitive formats. Swampert's got some pretty well-rounded stats, befitting its appearance, with this one lagging area being speed, as you might expect. Honestly, Swampert doesn't pack anything that you can't figure out just from looking at it. It's got bulk, power, some good stab moves, and a few intimidating support moves as well. What makes Swampert such an incredible Pokemon is its typing. But wait, you say. Doesn't Quagsire have that typing too? Yeah, sure, but Quagsire's stats suck. Swampert's stats, which are just good all around, reveal that the water ground typing is absurdly good. In a metagame filled with bolt beam coverage, the ability to come in on electric types and immediately threaten was incredible. What's more, Swampert worked out in just the right way to be a stopgap to most physical threats in the tier. Swampert's hefty bulk and typing meant it was the go-to pivot for a huge amount of Gen 3 players. Earthquake and Ice Beam were absolutely required on every set, allowing it to beat those physical powerhouses one-on-one. -on -one. Resistances to Steel and Rock in particular meant Swampert was the premier Metagross and Tyranitar threat, both of which hated Earthquake, while Ice Beam was responsible for ending the runs of the 4 times weak Dragon types, like Flygon and Salamence. In its last two slots, Swampert had a large move pool to come from. Hydro Pump and Surf could guarantee reliable stab on Skarmory and Gengar, while Toxic allowed it to cripple other water types, its biggest threats. If you wanted to beat Blissey or even pull off an unexpected sweep, Curse was an option. While Swampert was nominally the best electric type threat in the game, its presence was so large that almost every electric type actually started running Hidden Power Grass just to beat Swampert. It didn't end there. Either Metagross and Tyranitar were both known to use lure sets specifically to neutralize Swampert, since it formed the defensive core of so many teams. Thus, while the option to run Roar was tempting to phase out opposing sweepers, modern Swampers frequently opted for Protect, since scouting that potential counter was highly important. Since Swampert would frequently be switching into attack after attack, some variants chose to run Rest, which would give it greater longevity throughout the match. Obviously, Protect and Roar were a bit too much utility when you'd be asleep, so these Swampers would go Sleep Talk or Curse to still be a threat. Finally, while Swampert's speed was certainly not its strong point, it could attempt to make some plays with Selackberry. Combined with Substitute and Endeavor, Swampert had a semi-reliable way to get its HP low and activate Torrent, making it a fearsome special sweeper against anything it outsped. Opponents unprepared for this set would suddenly be facing an amped up Swampert, continually safe behind subs that had a way to reduce any Pokemon to low health. It did lose to anything not afraid of its water attacks and ice attacks though, such as opposing Swamperts, Celebi, and Blissey. But it honestly was quite a bit more threatening than its apparent gimmick status shows. Though there were other options for Swampert like Counter and Miracoat, Sub Punch, and Choice Ban, the sheer utility of the standard tanking set was too much to pass up. Its biggest counters, as mentioned, were any grass type moves, and while Swampert is still one of the best Pokemon in Gen 3 overuse, the metagame has shifted to a point where it has to be scared of one good prediction ending its run. If you didn't want to deal with prediction, Celebi would destroy Swampert as long as it didn't get frozen, setting up Calm Mine at will. Fellow grass types Venusaur also did well, and Heracross's special bulk and resistance to Earthquake let it battle it out pretty well. Many defensive Pokemon like Skarmory and Blissey did well depending on the set, and Bulky Waters would beat any non-toxic Swampert. Finally, Gyarados could set up on any non-Rock Slide Swampert. Perhaps Swampert's biggest problem though was Spikes, which exploited its lack of reliable recovery and meant Spitter support was very much appreciated. While that seems like a lot of threats, the thing is that Swampert was a catch-all counter to so much of the physical metagame. That sheer utility and the fact that it could stop any physical sweeper in its tracks made it one of the best Pokemon in the game. It wasn't supposed to just beat everything though. It would switch in, 
four switches, and then let its team wreak havoc. If it's gone down in usage recently, it's only because people are so used to fighting it these days. Swapper got a few upgrades going into Gen 4, but there's only one that made a huge difference. That's right, it's Stealth Rock. That same pivot quality lived into Gen 4, making Swamper a reliable lead and a great Pokemon for the mid game, where he could potentially re up on rocks and still be a threat in its own right. Stealth Rocks frequently replaced the third attacking move, meaning the fourth move slot on the standard set was not only a battle for Roar and Protect, but now Surf as well. Of course, you'd still see Toxic Swamperts around sometimes, or even the powerful new option Stone Edge, but some more defensive utility was frequently more valuable, especially since multiple enemy leads like to explode. Swampert didn't have to rely on Stealth Rock though. Rest Talk was still around as well, with some boosts in the form of better physical attacking moves like Stone Edge and Avalanche. Of course, three move slots had to be devoted to Rest, Sleep Talk, and Earthquake, so choosing the last move was sometimes hard. It would often actually be Roar, as the addition of Stealth Rocks meant continually phasing was a good strategy on its own. Along with Rest Talk, Swampert also could run another Gen 2 staple, Curse. Again bolstered by a wider physical move pool now available in addition to the physical special split. And finally, since we're talking physical moves, Choice Band became a more viable set as well, frequently running Waterfall, Earthquake, Stone Edge, and Ice Punch. All these sets played differently as you can imagine. While the typical tank set was glue that could fit on any team, the boosty sets worked at beating out other boosters in stall, while the Choice Set punched holes in the enemy team and forced switches. Meaning you better have some entry hazards on a Pokemon that's not Swampert for that set. But Swampert's main weakness was still the same, Grass types. Grass types were even more numerous because of Shaman, Breloom's increased presence, and Roserade. But they also had to be scared of Swampert's choice set, which could ice punch them into oblivion. Of course, Hidden Power Grass was always an option, and Grass Knot was an even more frequent threat on the likes of Infernape and Jirachi. Aside from that, the same bulky water types still messed with it, as did Skarmory and other spike users. The other new threats were other tanks. Rotom and Dust Noir in particular exploited non-rest Swampert's weakness to status. But even though Swampert's counters became more numerous, it had leveled up in its own right. That new Stealth Rock-ish was some good sh** and was more than enough to make Swampert a top tier Pokemon. And don't forget, it resisted them too. And I've said it before, Gen 5 is when Power Creep really kicked into overdrive, and Swampert was one of the unfortunate victims of that trend. Suddenly 190-90 defenses weren't looking quite as sturdy as they had before. Funnily enough, the once laughed at Quagsire was a better water ground type for countering physical boosters because of its unaware Dream World ability. Go check out our Quagsire video for more info on that, and how that doofus always kept itself relevant. What's more, the Weather Wars were not kind to Swampert, who had always struggled with other bulky water types anyways. In fact, Gastrodon became the new meta version of Swampert, utilizing its Storm Drain ability to become a potent threat against the unending torrential downpour. And Swampert's counters became just too much to deal with. Amoongus and Slowbro were two new additions, but the biggest threat was another tank, the ubiquitous Ferrothorn, who resisted Waterfall and Ice Punch and one hit KO'd with Power Whip. Even Super Power and Earthquake wouldn't straight up beat Ferrothorn whose high defenses were just too much for Swampert to deal with sometimes. Ironic that it would finally be a grass tank and not an attacker who put Swampert in the dirt, huh? Faced with stiff competition and an unforgivable meta, Swampert had to adapt. Its tank set stuck around for a while and could now run Scald for more threat to sweepers, but the introduction of Black and White 2 made Rain even more powerful and added even more powerful threats, such as the Therian forms. While Swampert sank into the mud of underuse, it had one viable option in overuse utilizing its great typing for a different purpose, attacking. The Choice Band set actually had a chance of beating Ferrothorn and other defensive Pokemon like Jellicent. On paper, this set could be anything with the right prediction, as a combination of Earthquake, Waterfall Superpower, and Ice Punch or Stone Edge let Swampert hit so much super effectively. A Swampert with little defense investment was dead meat. Swampert found itself shockingly in underuse after doing so well in the previous two generations, but hope was on the way. But before we talk about Swampert's big change, let's talk about it a bit in VGC 2012. Though Swampert's struggles continued into VGC, where Gastrodon still beat it out in most regards, and it couldn't handle strong special attackers like Latios and Hydreigon, it did have one thing going for it, Wide Guard, which blocked the spread moves so frequently used in doubles. This meant Swampert at least had a niche in VGC, and in the end, it didn't see that much use because Hitmontop did his job so much better and had the ability to decimate opposing Tyranitar and Hydreigon while also sporting Fake Out. It saw some usage from Spanish players in 2012 Worlds, but wasn't really the greatest Pokemon overall. Anyways, back to Swampert's resurgence. Like an angel from the mud, Swampert is reborn in its new, roided out form of Mega Swampert. Before Oraz, Swampert was still mucking around in underuse as a good but not great tank, playing the same as it pretty much always had. 
Once it got its Mega Evolution, well, it was still in underuse. But that's not because Mega Swampert isn't strong, au contraire. Mega Swampert was probably one of the best rain sweepers in the game, sporting swift swim and absolutely terrifying stats, including 150 attack. Almost every rain team runs a Mega Swampert as their ace, able to wash away entire teams with its rain boosted waterfall. This Swampert could beat dragon types, electric types, and honestly just push through almost everything with its absurdly powerful waterfall. You just had to get enough done before the rain was up. As such, Pokemon that could waste Mega Swampert's time or force it out were especially good. As always, grass types like Mega Venusaur and Celebi were the biggest threats, and bulky water types were also great at wasting time. While opposing physical walls could stop Swampert in its tracks, if it had power power up punch, Swampert merely grinned and started, well, powering up. Mega Swampert could also straight up lose the speed war against other rain sweepers like Kingdra, or just against really fast scarfed Keldeo or Latios. Finally, Swampert wouldn't get the speed boost on the turn it evolved, meaning it had to be careful to find a good safe switch. And that was sometimes hard, given that you only had 8 turns to make it work. But don't let Mega Swampert's UU tearing fool you. It was incredibly powerful. It's just that the rain as a playstyle was more stuck in underuse. But if you ran it in overuse, you were probably using Mega Swampert. And Mega Swapper was, of course, not even around for VGC 2014. While it required a lot of team support to be useful, especially with Politoes so easily exploited in doubles, Mega Swapper did make some appearances in VGC with Manual Ring, frequently alongside Thunderous. Red Wolf took it to second at Virginia Regionals, while Hibiki made top 4 in Wurzburg Regionals and top 64 at Nationals with the same combo. These Swampers were pretty standard. Waterfall, Protect, Earthquake were all fairly mandatory, and then you most likely wanted Ice Punch for coverage. In the end though, it was actually regular Swampert that was most successful in 2014. Well, you know by now that 2015 Worlds was dominated by Chalk, Aaron Cybertron Zhang took a vanilla Swampert to 28th at Worlds, alongside his Mega Salamence and Gothitelle core. This Swampert was designed to round out a Fire Water Grass core with Ferrothorn and Blaziken. With an Assault Vest, Swampert was tanky, but its big surprise was that it was a special attacking Swampert. This Swampert ran Scald, Ice Beam, Earth Power, and Rock Slide, letting it threaten Thunderous, Landorus, Heatran, and especially Aegislash, surprising opponents with its attacking power. In Florida Regionals, two of the top four actually both used normal Swampert, William Collins and Ashton Cox. While there's not any real report on these, Ashton's team had a triple fire core, so it's safe to say Swampert has some protection against grass types there. And that's it, so how good was Swampert actually? Mm, this one is hard to say. It was amazing in Gen 3 and 4, where it was honestly one of the best tanks in the game. But come Gen 5, the power creep was too much for its middling stats, and you'd be hard pressed to find Swampert. These days, it's one of so many mega Mega Pokemon that are potentially incredibly scary, but then again, you can only have one of them, and Mega Swampert's relying on rain makes it even harder to use. I'd say Swampert was good, definitely better than some other starters, and it's hard to ignore the heights this Mud Dweller soared to at one point. Thanks for watching, everyone, and as always, if you liked the video and you want to see more, be sure to subscribe to False Swipe Gaming for more weekly Pokemon content, and of course, comment on what Pokemon you want to see next. Also, thank you so much to our patrons for continued support of our videos, and thank you to everyone watching as well. And follow my crew on these social media platforms, yada yada yada. And that's all I got. See you next time, everyone.